This was my alarm on Thursday morning, on the 24th of February 2022. This was the worst day of my life. Russia was bombing Ukraine's airports and military bases. This was the beginning of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Peace is something often taken for granted. I didn't spend much time thinking about peace before that day. But now I will tell you my story about what I've learned in the last 18 months, about war and about myself. I hope my story will help you value what you have and that you can help promote peace and be ready for constant change. Ten years ago, I was just like you. I was in Switzerland at an event a bit like this one. People were talking about refugees in Europe and how to help them. I didn't know that one day I would be a refugee. And I had a great life. I got to travel around the world. I had a cool job in Kyiv as a marketing and communications team leader, working with brands like Ubisoft and Warner Brothers. And what were the biggest issues of my life? Just the usual, uni, family, broken heart. So that who I was when I went to sleep on Wednesday evening, the 23rd of February. Shock waves hit the windows. I wake up, I confused. My partner is straight away on his phone, searching his news feed. We can't find anything online. The fears we've been having recently have come true. Part of me suspected that it would never happen, but it has. But what exactly? Is it just a warning shot or a full-scale invasion? Is it just Kyiv or the whole country? Is it nuclear? Media start to report that Russia has attacked to slow down our army's response by bombing our airports, military bases and other essential sites. Russia has started a war with Ukraine. Media speculate that Russia wants to stop Ukraine joining NATO and the European Union to take control of new coal and gas fields. And maybe Putin wants to rebuild USSR. I feel overwhelmed, but also calm. It's strange. At that time, our phones start going crazy. People are ringing us to check we are okay. And we are ringing our friends and family for the same reason. Does Ukraine stand a chance? Russia is a big country with almost limitless resources. Do I want to live under the control of Russia? Would you? I am beginning to realize we can't stay in Kyiv. I want to get to my family in Kherson, which is 700 kilometers away. Already, all roads are blocked. Can I get a train ticket? I am not the only one with that idea. The train website doesn't work properly. But amazingly, I managed to buy three tickets. I am really lucky. I got the last three tickets for me, my partner, and my best friend. Maybe we will survive. There is a good chance Ukraine's banking system will collapse. I get to the nearest ATM and withdraw a few thousand dollars in cash. And who uses cash these days? I bet you go whole weeks without touching any cash at all. I am one of the lucky ones. Moments later, banks impose limits 
on the amount of cash you can withdraw. Finally, my mom gets through on phone and tells me not to go to Kherson. It's not safe anymore. The Russians have already attacked the city and they are getting closer as it is really near the Crimea, which Russia has occupied in 2014. My tickets are useless and I need a new plan. How to get out? There are no taxis or buses. I call all my friends with cars, but they don't have space. We are trapped. This has been the longest day of my life. Out of the blue, a friend who I haven't spoken to in years calls me. She says, Vlad, they are evacuating people on trains and you don't need a ticket. Now we have a plan. It's only been 12 hours since the beginning of the invasion, but my life is about to change forever. Standing in my apartment, I realize that I can only live with what I can carry. Have you ever thought of all your stuff what really matters? Standing there, I think, what do I take? My laptop, my phone, some money, jewelry, a backpack? I'm standing there looking at my life and I leave and close the door. In subway I see thousands of people hiding from bombs. At the train station people are realizing that they carry too much. Look at these suitcases, just abandoned. People choose life over the luggage. Later, I hear that many people left so quickly. They didn't let their pets out and they stayed locked up without any food and water. I did a lot of choices on that day and I hope there were good ones. My family decided to stay in Kherson region. They bravely blocked an important road from Kherson to Mykolaiv, and this helped my village to stay unoccupied for three weeks. But later, Russians invaded. When they found out that my mom and dad were part of the resistance, they kidnapped my parents, they tortured my dad, and they threatened my mom that they would kill her children. This happened twice. But I'm glad to say my family are fine now and even stronger. The story of my family resistance shows me that simple people can make a big difference, even in a terrible situation. So, what have I learned? We all heard about first world problems. My iPhone is two years old. I have nothing to wear for the party or my flight is delayed. Before the war, I was worried about the same things. Think about all the things you would leave behind when you hear a real fire alarm. I've learned they are not important. And I've learned not to take my life for granted. I've learned that now I have a responsibility to my country, to build support for Ukraine wherever I can. If you have the privilege of living in peace, use that privilege to help those who aren't. People ask me how Ukraine is dealing with the invasion. Things are even worse than they read in the media. And they ask me how they can help. And I answer to them that they can donate to United Nations, United 24, or the National Bank of Ukraine, 
or any other organization bringing aid. Aid saves lives. My advice to you is simple. Try to enjoy every moment of your life and be happy, no matter what. Spread love and help others. That's what I try to do every day. And even if I die tomorrow, I won't regret anything. For many people of your age in Ukraine, their last day has already happened. Each of us can be stronger than we realize. Believe me, if something terrible happens in your life, you can make it through. But don't assume peace and life are guaranteed. The world is more fragile than we think. Now I understand that nothing is more important than living in peace. Thank you very much.